I'm calling God the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. day to praise the Lord, to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, as we sang that song, God is the same God that did everything back then. He can do it and he will do it now if we'll just say, I need you now because you are the rock of my salvation. Let's stand and sing that anything is possible. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You know, I'm going to ask you to be seated here. I'm going to, you know, I, I have, I, I saw Preston is here, Olivia, you're here, and Jenny, I want you guys to come up. We're going to, we're going to let our kids pray for our kids again. So you guys come on up, uh, and you know what, I want you to know as the kids are coming up, uh, getting ready to pray, Brody's here too, I want you to know that last week, I want to thank you so much for, for the adults that came up for prayers. Ashton, thank you, sir, ma'am. I, you know, I'm so proud of that because, you know, our little friend Ruth, she came up, and I know Olivia prayed for her, and Ruth was having some real bad problems with her neck and all that. And she said that after she got prayer for last week, she's had no problems with her necks. Nothing, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and, and so I want you to know that when, you know, when we're praying for these kids and when our kids do pray, I want you to know something is happening, amen? amen. And we're grateful for that. You know, and just extend your hands out to the kids as they come up, and, you know, come on up, kids, and we're going to let these guys pray for you, okay? Still in your hands, great is 
You know, I want you just to, you know, would you just, you know, those that song, His Promises Haven't Failed Us Yet. And Beth, maybe you could just play through, and the musicians kind of just play through that song a little bit. You know, I want you to just to please close your eyes. Open your heart. And let God's Spirit touch your life. Every one of us that walk through these doors today, Everyone watching on the online, we need a touch from God in our lives. I don't care how good our day is going, it can always be better. I don't care how bad it is, it's going to get better. Hallelujah. We serve a God that not only gives us hope, but also delivers on that hope. And so I want you just to, you know, as, as, as you know, the musicians are playing, I want you just to just open your heart. I want you to say, Jesus, come in and, and fill that need, touch that that area in my life that needs touching. Heal it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. You know, that that song says, it's found out of Lamentations, I believe the third chapter, maybe chapter, verses 22 and 23. It says, great is thy faithfulness, O God. It says that his faithfulness reaches to the heavens. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for your faithfulness in our lives today in the name of Jesus. That, Lord God, when it looked like we were down and out, we might have been for a moment, but we knew you were coming to our rescue, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. When everybody had forsaken us, we know, Lord God, that you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. When the world said we had no value in our lives, Father God, you valued us enough you sent your only son, Jesus, to shed his blood for us in the name of the Lord. We thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. We thank you, Jesus. You know, I just want us to sing that little chorus through, Great is thy faithfulness, again, off the, of the song we just sang. And you know, and I just want you to sing that with you as a as just a confession of your faith to Jesus. Just telling him, thank you for being great in your faithfulness towards me. Thank you, Jesus. have a life free of heartaches he said we wouldn't have a life free of tribulations but he said he'd always be there for us see sometimes maybe the world thinks maybe that we as Christians think that just because we're a believer in Jesus that all of our honkies are honkies and our dories are dories that's not how it works I wish it did but it doesn't but he made a promise to us that in every trial and every tribulation and every valley and every mountaintop in our good days and in our bad days. He said, you know what? I'm always going to be with you. I'm always going to be with you. You know, so many times our, we live in such a fast-paced life that we forget to just to kind of sit down and smell the roses, so to speak. You know, this morning as Meryl and I, we had our tea before we came to church. We're sitting outside and you hear the birds chirping, the, the fresh breeze is blowing by it's cool out how can you not believe there's not a god we just looked around his creation we just said lord thank you for your gift of today for us 
And Lord God, we're going to be good stewards of this day. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you're seated, would you turn to your neighbor and say, God is faithful to you. Would you do that, please? You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I want to. I want you to know God is so faithful. You know, we're going to have a baptism service after church today, uh, and where we're going to go, where we usually go, it's about that deep. Okay, okay. We need some rain. Okay, and so uh, I asked Reed. He was out on the river yesterday to check out a couple of places. And what we're going to do is our baptism service. We're going to go down where the boat launch is. Okay, we're going to go down there. There's an area down there that we can do baptisms down there. And you know what's kind of neat? Maybe there might be people putting a launching out their boat, okay? And you know what? Then they'll get to experience a baptism also. You know, the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of salvation to those that believe first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. And you know what? If somebody's putting in their boat right there, I'm not going to be ashamed of, of baptizing somebody in Jesus' name. I want you to know that. And so, uh, you know... Uh, 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 Chris was going to get baptized today, but then she had a medical thing with her back. But I still have Preston, okay? And if anybody else, if God's touching your heart to be baptized, and we're going to meet down there after church. Because I tell you what, I'm excited about what God is doing in, in Preston Davis's life. I really am. And it's fun to watch this, okay? Also, you know, we had a great time. Uh, Paula Duggan, she helped us. Uh, she let us use her little cabin uh, uh, down by across the river, uh, down by, in South Sioux City. We had 19 folks show up with kids and parents. We had a great, great time. You know, and, and I really looked at Omar. He, he brought Zeke and Zoe in there. And, and really, it's amazing. Omar gets, the, uh, gets along better with the kids than he does the adults. Okay, no. <laughs> but we had, a, we had a great time. We really did and all that. And I want to thank everybody for doing that. I actually, I think I left my little piece of paper in my office. I had the rest of my... Uh, I also, I was going to say, ladies... If you want to sign up for, for, and I hope you will. You know, I, I realize a lot of you might say, well, that's, that's two days, Thursday and Friday. What I find, yeah, I Saturday, but I'm giving up maybe some time. What's your life worth, okay? You can go there and you get built up. It's what we talked about with our kids having these mountaintop experiences. You need mountaintop experiences. I've already rented a 15-passenger van, okay? And so we need to fill it, okay, ladies? And so, you know, just go to jamesriver.com and you can uh, get, go on their design for life. Please don't tell me you're too busy, okay? Because you're not too busy, okay? Uh, I, I'm just being very honest with you about that. And kids, if you want to sign up, today is, I, no, I, today is the last day for the ladies' retreat, I think, for if you want to get in at $50 off. And all you have to do is if you go and you sign up, you sign up and then you just have to put a deposit down. Uh, I think $45, and the rest is due on September 9th, by September 19th. And for our kids, if you want to go to camp, I, I, talk, I called a lady down there, and, we're, and I think you might know it now, it's Camp 3 that we're going to be going to next year. So if you go to jamesriver.com and go to their page and go all the way down, it will say youth down there. Punch on youth, and that will bring you up your camps. Okay, I talked to the lady on how we're going to do all that. Okay? I will make a little announcement on there, the ladies. I've been to their retreat. I've been to their leaders' conference this three or four times. You will be amazed at how much God will touch your heart. Yep. Yeah. And our daughter took us out there in her ginormous home, so we're not paying for a hotel. No. I just want you to know that it's always a time of fellowship for us women, because sometimes we're so busy we don't even get back. And so I just want you to know, I've been there. It's, it's kind of like the kids said, I really didn't want to go, but I'm glad I went. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's that same thing. If you as a woman would like to go, you'll say, eh, I don't want to really go, but I'm going. And then after you went, you'll say, I'm so glad yep. I went. And so I'm just kind of putting that out there. If God's touching on, touching on your heart to go, please don't, don't not go. I know that's not the way you Yeah, yeah. You can tell Meryl's been out of school for three months. Okay, hallelujah, okay. She's going to get that grammar back in kindergarten, okay, real close, okay, when she goes back. But I hope you will go, and, uh, you know, and, and you'll have an enjoyable time. I'm going to be driving you down there, okay. 
Uh, the guys know, I mean, we waited in big lines, okay, when we were down there at the men's conference. I'm going to drop you off at the front door, okay, and then I'm going to take off in the van, and then when you guys are done, I'm going to magically appear right back, and you can, you can jump in the van, we'll take you back to our daughter's house and all this and that. And so I'm telling you what, it's never going to get any easier than that, okay? And so I, I hope you really uh, make that effort to come. You know, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Preston to come on up here. Bob, I have the dark gray one, okay? And, you know, Preston, he, uh, they were down in Arizona uh, last week, okay? And uh, Preston, God, turn around, God did such a wonderful work with Preston. He really did. We're so proud of him. And, and like I said, it blessed my heart that Preston said that he wanted me to baptize him. And, and he wanted his, his dad and mom there. He wanted his grandpa and grandma there. He wanted those things there. And that's why Preston's going to get baptized today. But I want to press in, and I don't know, Bro, do you have anything else you want to share? If you, okay. Preston has some things, and you just share on your heart, okay, Preston? Yeah, yeah I really didn't want to go. So, <laughs> but I'm glad I did. Thank you, Jeff. And thank your mom. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, going there, it was amazing watching everybody get healed. There were so many people with things that were going wrong in their life, and you just see them, you watch them get healed. And it's a lot different going down there and seeing a bunch of different people than just the same people we see every week here. Not just seeing different people, but different people our age is yep. crazy. But yeah, there's a couple of things that stuck out in the sermon that really hit hard. And, uh, a couple of things were an encounter with Jesus. An encounter with Jesus will set you free, but your yep. habits will keep you free. And another one was a. Uh, there's two things that'll keep you from saying Jesus, and that's when you chase bread and when you compare bread. And the last one is that uh, we all get hungry, but not all of us get full. So, mm. yeah. Thank you, Jeff, for <laughs> taking us. Okay. Nice. Thank nice. you, Preston. You know what? Let's extend our hands out, and let's pray for Preston like we did last week. For the other kids, Lord, we thank you and we praise you that you have started a good work in Preston Davis's life, Lord. And, and I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that you started that good work and you're going to finish it, Lord. And and, uh, Lord, I thank you and I praise you with this baptism service that we have coming up. This is just another of his steps in his walk with Jesus. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for just taking care of him and just this influencing the entire Davis family, Lord God. It just takes a spark to get the fire going. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thanks, amen. Preston. God bless you. Amen. You know, and, and, uh, and so, you know, I got a, a card the other day. I've never got one like this before in my life. I got this card from somebody I buried. Kind of different, isn't it? No, you heard me. I got this card from somebody that I buried, from Kelly Bostwick. He wrote this card before he died, and he told his daughter, Christine, to give it to me. I'm going to keep it. Pastor Jeff, Kelly here. I just wanted you to know that I made it to heaven. Thanks for leading the way, and you are right. The streets are made of gold. I also wanted to thank you for the kind words on, at my funeral and let you know that I also consider you as a friend also. Until we meet again, Kelly Bostwick. I'm keeping that one. I want you to know that. Yes. I'm keeping that one until... We meet again. And I hope what that does is that will help you with people that maybe you have loved ones that have gone on. See, your life, your witness makes all the difference in the world. Don't let the devil or the world or anybody else tell you your witness doesn't matter. Amen? Very, very important. Let's pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for those Kind words from Kelly, Lord God, as he looked in faith, Lord God, and as he's walking on those streets of gold, as he's encouraging us and, and his family, Lord God, in their walk with you, Lord God, that, that, that it is real. Heaven is real. The streets are lined with gold. There are mansions there, Lord God. And we thank you. We praise you, Lord God, for that. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, as, 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 as people are traveling, Lord God, trying to maybe get in that last vacation, Lord Jesus, that you would just get people traveling mercies. We thank you. We praise you, Lord God for all the teachers, for all the staff members, 
of our schools, Lord God, you continue to bless them, Lord God, and get them ready for this school year. We thank you, Lord God, for just watching over us and just meeting all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And thank you, Jesus, for what you've done in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, as we bring our tithes and our gifts and our offerings into your storehouse, that you will truly open the windows of heaven upon us, Lord God, that we won't have room enough to contain them. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen. amen. You know, we're going to have a baptism uh, uh, this uh, after our service, but I ran across this. It was actually titled Redneck Baptism. Redneck Baptism, okay? It says, a man, a woman, and a redneck were scheduled to be baptized. The man was baptized first. When he came up out of the water, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The woman was baptized as she came out of the water and said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now it was the redneck's turn. He didn't know any verses in the Bible, so when he came out of the water, he yelled, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know what Preston's going to say when he comes out of the water. Hallelujah, okay? But we're going to be there to experience it, okay? What I hope, you know, this week, you'll look up here again. I, what have you done this week with your faith? We talked about this last week. Have you put wood on it this week? Because remember what we said, not only with our kids, not only with our lives, but the people around us. There's two things we get to do with our faith. We can either put wood on it, or we can put water on it. See, we all have a choice every day with our faith. Are we going to put wood on it so it'll grow? Are you satisfied with where you're at? See, we know this about a fire. We had one out at Paul's. I thought maybe they were going to call the South Sioux Fire Department, okay? We contributed global warming that night, okay? But the fact of the matter is, a fire never stays the same. It's either going out or it's getting bigger, isn't it? Come on. See, our faith never stays the same. It's either growing or it's diminishing. You get to decide if you're going to put wood on your faith. And if we're not putting wood on our faith, what happens with maybe your kids or maybe one of your siblings or maybe your husband, your wife, your spouse, they're all excited about Jesus, but you know, well, if we get going with this Jesus guy, it's going to impact our life differently. Maybe we're going to have to do things differently than do we put water on that fire and put it out. See, the choice is ours every day, every week, every month. Wood or water, the choice is really ours. And so if you're not happy where you're at, spiritually i hope you'll say i'm going to put i'm going to put a log on there i'm going to get it, my fire going you know i've seen people meryl and i have been in the ministry for over 40 years i've seen people come to church and be on fire for jesus and love jesus and all of a sudden maybe six months a year later i never see them again <clears throat> you know what happened they quit putting the wood on the fire and they allowed water to douse out their flame Yet the Bible says that you cannot hide a candle, a fire. Oh, you know, you should put it up on a mountaintop. So I want to encourage you. I told you last week, I'm going to leave this up here for a few weeks. Just so when you walk in, you can see that. You can think, am I putting wood or water on my spiritual fire? Amen? Well, you know, we're going to talk about baptism today because maybe there's somebody here besides Preston that maybe didn't, dis you know, thought, I didn't think I was going to get baptized today, but decides to get baptized. And even if you've been baptized, I think it's really important that we know why we're being baptized, okay? Over in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, it says, And he, Jesus, said to his disciples, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. What we're finding out here that evidently baptism must meant something to Jesus. If these are some, you know, the last words a dying person speaks are always very important. I have been around people who have died. And you know what words I've never heard them utter is? How's my 401k doing? I've never heard anybody say that to me. 
Because you know what? It doesn't matter. They talk about family. They talk about things in life. And these were some of the last words <clears throat> of Jesus. And so when he told his disciples to baptize his disciples, that meant baptism was important. What we need to realize is that the Lord really only left us two ordinances to follow. Number one, the, the Lord's Supper, communion, and baptism, okay? In spite of leaving us only two ordinances, our commands to do, or follow, many people who call themselves Christians today have never been baptized according to the New Testament. Everybody say that with me. According to the New Testament. Maybe according to church rules, but not according to the New Testament. What I have found out in life, you've heard me say this many times, if you want Bible results, you got to get on the Bible system. And so we need to make sure if we've not been baptized according to the New Testament, we should want to be, okay? We found out uh, last week that, what, there's five reasons we won't go into them. Five reasons why maybe people don't get baptized. Number one, maybe they're just ignorant of it, okay? Maybe they're just ignorant of it, okay? Maybe number two is they're proudful. They're thinking, I don't need that. Maybe three, maybe number three, they're just indifferent. But, you know, that's okay. It's okay for you, but not for me. Maybe number four, they're defiant. They think, I don't need that. Or maybe number five, they're just unsaved. They never made a commitment to Jesus. When we grasp how dear and clear the subject of baptism was to the heart of God, our natural response should be, I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. If you are reading your Bible, Jesus was baptized. He wasn't sprinkled. He was immersed in the Jordan. I was talking to somebody the other day uh, about some other subjects, and I was telling him, I said, yeah, we're going to have a baptism this week. And on Sunday, we're going down the river. And the guy said, you mean you actually dunk them in the river? I said, yeah, if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan. And you know what? If, G if it, the river was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Last week we talked a little bit, and we'll go through this real quickly, just for, for, but just a little reminder. We talked about what is baptism. We talked about baptism is the biblical act of, some, of being baptized or a person that is immersed, submerged, or dunked underwater. We found out that the Greek word for baptism is baptismo, okay? is used 77 times in the New Testament, and it means, and it always means to immerse or submerge completely, okay? In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, it says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up, everybody say came up. Came up, came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove alighting upon him. The word baptizo is never used, well, I'm going to say in the passive. What I mean by the passive, it means the water is never baptized onto somebody, such as sprinkling or dabbling on the forehead. It means an individual is always baptized or submerged into water. It says that Jesus came up out of the water. So that's how Jesus was baptized. The second question we said is, what is the purpose of baptism? Baptism really is also a teaching tool. It's an object lesson. It's a physical picture of something that has happened in your life spiritually. You're identifying with Jesus. Over in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, Colossians 2, verse 12, it says, it, the apostle Paul writes, he says, Buried with him Jesus in baptism, in which also were raised with him Jesus through faith in the working of God, who raised him Jesus from the dead. So we're buried with Jesus in baptism, but then we're raised up with Jesus in his resurrection. See, baptism is a symbol of a time that we died to sin and we were raised to new life. See, when you and I were baptized, are going to be baptized, we're telling the world something different has taken place in my life. I'm going to, you know, I can go to church, I can do these things, but I'm going to be baptized because I'm going to identify with Jesus. I'm going to identify with Jesus. I don't know about you, but have you ever had doubt in your minds? Come on, I, we all have, okay? And you know what it, it is for me? Maybe the devil will come along and tell you, you know what, maybe you're really not a Christian. Maybe you're really not this. But you know what baptism can do? Baptism, you can say to the devil, I'm, we're going to talk about being baptized doesn't get you saved. 
But you know what? When you're baptized, you can go back and say, you know, Mr. Devil, you know what? I don't have to doubt because I identified with Jesus that day. You know, maybe I got saved before, but I identified with Jesus that day and his burial in the baptism, and I'm identifying with Jesus in the coming up out of the waters and his resurrection. So it's a great time for you and I to identify with Jesus. The next question is, what is the significance of baptism? In baptism, you are demonstrating a bonding with the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saying to the world, my life has changed. Amen. You know what the world needs to see more than anything else? They need to see the church acting like the church. You know, it's amazing in life. Sometimes you can find a lot of the world in the church, okay? But you can't find a lot of the church out in the world, okay? You know what I'm saying? And so you know what? Sometimes people think, why should I go to, quote, church if they act just like the world? And isn't that a good question? You know, I, I've, I've always told you, I, I, I'm so appreciative of the people here at Christ the King. I know not everybody is perfect. I realize that in life. But we're doing our very best. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I think one of the reasons why we've continued to be able to maintain momentum and affect lives is because you know, we're, I've always said, we don't care who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory. See, there's not everybody in here believes the same thing. We all have our little personal things. I understand that, and I'm okay with that. But we're not letting our little personal uh, doctrine, so to speak, affecting our focus, and that is to lift Jesus up and let him draw all men to himself. And I think that's very, very important. So when we're baptized, we're bonding with Jesus for the kids that got baptized this summer, when you go back to school, you're not going to act like maybe you did last year. Because now all of a sudden you have a fellow Christian, a fellow person that you've been baptized with. That's not how Jesus would look. That's not like how Jesus would act. And we need to take that. As adults, is that how Jesus would want us to act? See, we're telling the world when we're baptized, we're bonding with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the bat in baptism, we're saying, you and I have died, we've been buried with him, and now we're being resurrected with him. You know, one of the greatest stories, we had the opportunity last Sunday after church, we went to Cedar Rapids to visit Marilyn's mom and, and her sister, who had surgery and some things, and there was an older lady that was in the church many years ago. I said she was older, but she's probably about my age now, okay, you know what I'm saying? She was older when I was there, okay? <laughs> But Margaret Clemens was her name. Margaret and her husband, they, or, they used to own Cedar Rapids Tent Nodding. And, you know, you get into that groove of people, it's kind of rough there, putting the tents up and all this. And I remember one time talking to Margaret, and she was my little dancing partner. We'd, sit in the, we'd stand in the back there and praise and worship, and we'd kind of get some happy feet occasionally together. And Margaret and I were talking, and she told me when she said, Jeff, I used to have a mouth like a sailor. I looked at her, I said, Margaret, I can't believe that, because she was the sweetest, loving lady you'd ever met in your life. And you know, I would have never thought anything foul would ever come out of her mouth. But when Margaret, one time, she went to Israel with Marilyn's mom and dad on a, mission, on a trip just to visit the, nation, the, you know, the Holy Land. And Margaret got baptized in the, in the Jordan River. And they said it was so funny, because you know, everybody was getting baptized, and, and, you know, and they were coming out, and it was a really special moment for people. And Margaret came out of the waters with her hands in the air shouting to Jesus, hallelujah. Because you know what? She was identifying with him. And the old Margaret had died, and the new Margaret was resurrected. Amen? It says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith and the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. See, Paul was saying, and we need to, when we're baptized, it's no longer I who live. Lord, it's not my life anymore. I want to be clay in your hand. I want you to direct me. I want to be the vessel you can use. And that's what baptism is about. Over in Romans chapter 6, Paul wrote a lot of things about baptism. He says, or do you not know that as many of us who are, are as baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism in the death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also 
should walk in newness of life. What was Paul saying? When you and I are, we've died to Christ, when we come up, we're supposed to be walking in the newness of life. When we go under the water, we are buried with Christ. When we come out, we're raised in life with Christ. By being baptized, we're saying to the world, something happened to me on the inside, and I want everyone to know about it. Yes. Preston Davis. It would have been so easy for him to get baptized at camp and no one would have faulted him. Do you understand what I'm saying? But Preston told me, he says, I want my grandpa and my grandma there. I want my mom and dad there. What was Preston really saying there? He says, you know what? I want the people I love the most to know something happened to me with Jesus. That's what baptism is about. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power, the ability, the abundance, the strength, the might, the miraculous power, which implies a miracle of God to salvation, everyone who believes, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I remember when Brody came back from a tech one, uh, one, uh, one time, I think it was last year, and he was sitting around eating at dinner or at lunch at, at the table, and one of the kids said, oh, church boy, leave me alone. Church boy, leave me alone. You know, that hurts. Come on. That hurts. But you know what? Brody told me, he said, you know what? That person didn't give me my joy. That person wasn't taking my joy. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? See, Brody wasn't ashamed of the gospel. And you know what? We talk about kids, but how about us as adults? You know, we get around maybe our friends, our adult friends. Do we shy back a little bit away from the gospel? Because we don't want them to think we're one of them people. You know what them people are, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to be like that. No, maybe we need to be that way. Yeah. Not, not in their face, not being mean and nasty, but letting our light shine. Yeah. When they ask us, why do you seem to always be happy? are joyful, and I know you've gone through trials and tribulations. It's not because of the lack of, of tribulations, it's because an abundance of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very important. You know, the next question is, do I have to be baptized to be saved? And the answer is no. But salvation totally rests on faith and not works, okay? This is a major sticking point for some people, and let's see what the Bible says. In the Bible, everybody say the Bible. In the Bible, baptism is always dovetailed with believing. Always. Never once is baptism in and of itself, by itself. No, it's dovetailed with believing. Okay? Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, it says that if we confess with our mouth believing that Jesus Christ is, uh, the, uh, believe, uh, if we confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the, with the heart one believes in the righteousness and with the mouth salvation is made. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, not being baptized, lest anyone should boast. See, the Bible is telling us we don't get saved because of what we're doing. The things we're doing is because we're already saved. See, being baptized doesn't get you saved. My father-in-law, who passed away a couple years ago, was in ministry for 65 years. He said, you know what being baptized does? It just lets you go to hell cleaner, hallelujah. Okay? See, baptism does not get you saved. It's not of works, least we could boast. It's a gift from God. We believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. In Romans, in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, and Romans 10, 13, it says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, it's talking about, it didn't say you got baptized, you're saved. It's that we call upon the name of the Lord. Was the, I'm going to ask you this. In Luke chapter 23, verse 43, was the repentant thief on the cross baptized? You remember? There were three of them up there, and they were both uh, just kind of making fun of Jesus. Then the other one decided, hey, you know what? We're up here because of what we did. But he's up here because he didn't do anything wrong to be up here. 
And then, remember, he, he, the thief said to Jesus, will you remember me in your kingdom, in paradise? And Jesus said to him, today I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. Was that thief on the cross baptized? No. Was he going to be in God's kingdom? Yes. See, baptism in and of itself doesn't get us saved. But we should want to be baptized if we are saved. Very, very important. You know, baptism is a picture of a new life, not the meanings of securing it. I'm going to say that again because that's really important. Baptism is a picture of a new life, not the means of securing it. Water baptism is essential to obedience. Salvation does produce obedience. We should want to do these things if we're saved, okay? James chapter 2, verse 17 says, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. What's he saying? We should want to do something. See, if you and I have made a decision for Jesus Christ, we've not been baptized according to the New Testament, we should want to be baptized. Why wouldn't you want to identify with Jesus? You might say, well, I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too this. You know, no. We just want to identify with Jesus. See, the last question I'm going to ask this morning is this. We ask ourselves, what if I was baptized as an infant? What if I was baptized as an infant? I was. The one thing I'll say about that is it's a sad doctrine because there's nothing in Scripture that teaches infant baptism. I'm going to say it again. It's a sad doctrine because nothing, everybody say nothing. Nothing in Scripture teaches about infant baptism. Okay? I want, we're going to go about that. Okay? I think it's sad. Why I think it's a sad doctrine? Because it prevents people from acknowledging they are sinners and in need of salvation. When Marilyn and I, we've been missionaries and we've gone literally around the world, and you talk to people and we say, hey, are you Christian? And you know what they've told me many times? I've been baptized. Good. You answered my question with not the right answer. Okay, I'm happy you were baptized. But I didn't ask you if you were, you know, if I ask them, were you baptized? And they say, no, I'm a Christian. They never tell me that. But I ask them, are you a Christian? They want to say, I've been baptized. See, baptism doesn't get us saved. And most of the time when these people were baptized, they were infants. How many infants do you know believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? Most of them are lucky to say goo goo and gaga, hallelujah. And so it's a sad doctrine because it steals this tremendous experience away from people. I'm thinking about Preston. I'm talking about Preston this morning. Other ones have been baptized. I'm thinking about Preston today. When he goes under these waters and his dad's going to help me, okay? It's going to be a moment he'll never forget in his life. And if, let's say, Preston had been baptized as an infant, and he say, Pastor Jeff, why would I need to be baptized again? I was ba Look at the experience that sad doctrine is going to steal from him and his family. That's why it's a sad doctrine. People say, if I was baptized as an infant, do I need to be rebaptized? The answer, I think, is very simple. To this question if you and i have not been baptized according to the new testament what is baptism by the new testament by immersion in water following a decision to receive jesus christ as our lord and our savior then we need to be see it doesn't matter what we did before we personally came to christ it matters what we're doing after entering into that personal relationship with jesus so you know what we're finding out this what if you have not been immersed, baptized, according to the New Testament way, then yes, you should get rebaptized. I have been. Okay? A lot of people in here have been already. And you know what? Because it, they wanted to follow the commands of Jesus. They wanted to be obedient. And you know what happens when we're obedient? The Bible says in Isaiah 1, 19... If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Maybe some people here watching my online are here. Maybe you're having a struggle in life. Maybe there's something in your life that 
that you can't seem to get the victory over because you're not even being obedient to a simple command of being baptized according to the New Testament. Maybe. I don't know. But, you know, it's kind of hard. To, you know, it's, it's always amazing. People say, well, I will do this if this would ever happen. No, that's not how God works. God says, if you do the little things first, then I'll make your ruler over a little bit more. And when I can trust you with this much, then I'll give you a little bit more, and then a little bit more. That's how we get great in God's kingdom. God doesn't come along and say, you know what, I'm going to give you the keys to the church. All. No, you know what, everybody likes to have keys to the church, but nobody wants to sit around and, and, and lock it up before everybody's gone. No, see, there comes responsibility. We have to grow with the Lord. And if you've not been immersed and you've made a decision for Jesus, I hope you'll meet us out at the boat ramp. I really do. I hope you'll be willing to share your story about what Jesus has done for you. I hope you will. Because I believe it can be something that will transform your life and will set you on a pathway that God can bless you abundantly what you can even ask or think. So I want to leave you with these, uh, these words this morning. And the worship team can come up if they want. Baptism isn't an option. Baptism isn't an option. It is a command that all Christians should follow. And when we follow these commands, the blessings of God will come upon our lives. Why? Because according to Jesus, the truth will set you free. Jesus said in John, he said, and the truth will set you free. If we know we should be baptized according to the New Testament and we don't do it, then the truth is not setting us free. But if we know we should be baptized according to the New Testament and we do it, what are we doing then? We're following truth. And the truth will set you free. You know, Jesus didn't go to the cross so we could be bound. I got enough things I'm dealing with in life. So, I mean, if, so if I know I should be baptized and immersed according to the New Testament, I want to get that thing off my checklist, so to speak. Say, so, you know, those are one of the easier things to follow. You know what I'm saying? These are one of the things that are, are, they're in black and white and red. And you know what? If you'll do that, I believe that God will bless your lives. Don't let, you know, I've heard people say, well, I've been in the church for so long. People might, no, people are going to applaud you. If you've been to inner baptism, I tell you what, they are so welcoming. So don't let anybody or anything keep you from being obedient to the word of God. Because when we are, if we're willing and obedient, well, we truly will be set free. Amen. Why don't we stand up, please? You know, and I want you just to, you know, as we sing this last song, I want you to seriously, you know, I think a little Chris back there, you know, she moved here from Nevada, and, and you know, she wanted to get baptized so bad, and then she got her MRI that says she has a crack in one of her vertebrae. She can't do it today. And, and, and it, it hurts her so bad. And I'm thinking, maybe somebody out here, God wants you to do it today. Chris would love to do it today and can't. Because there's some physical limitations. And so I'm asking you as we sing this last song, if God's speaking to your heart, don't let a non-physical limitation keep you from following Jesus today. Amen? Thank you.
invitation to you today when you come on down to the river maybe you're going to come down to the river for baptism maybe you're going to come down the river to support Preston and maybe whoever else is going to get baptized but I'm just going to invite you to come on down to the river because I tell you what God you know God just doesn't work on the people that are getting baptized a lot of times that Holy Spirit will just kind of overflow and help and touch the people's hearts that are on the on the banks too amen would you put your hands towards heaven as I get ready to bless you May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may the Lord give you his shalom, his peace. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You know what, as I look before we get ready to leave, I look up there, it's a little after what, 10 is it? Is that what it is? I can't, yeah, a little after 10. How about at 1030 we're going to meet down at the river, at the, at the boat ramp, okay? And we're going to have our baptism at 1030 down there, okay? So if you want to come and be a part of it, maybe if you decided God spoke to your heart, you need to run home and get some new clothes to get, get immersed, I want you to do that. Or maybe if you live too far and you can't get your clothes, come on down to the river just the way you are, amen? And we'll dunk you and we'll get you baptized and we're going to see God's spirit touch your lives, amen? Thank you, God bless you. See you at 1030.